Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 94 of our WWE 2022 save in DW 2020. This is Royal Rumble Part 2. I say that again, Royal Rumble Part 2. I'm putting these up back to back. So if you've not seen Part 1 yet, please go do that first because that is very important uh, for what's already happened in the show. Um, you will know, you know, kind of the outcome of our Wall Women's Championship match, the Continental Championship match, the grudge match between Dakota Kai and Alexa Bliss, um, and the outcome of the women's Royal Rumble match. So uh, in case I accidentally mention some of it in this part, which I probably will, um, be sure to go back and watch that first, or otherwise there will be something spoiled, I'm sure, uh, based on what we have to get into with this uh, part two of the show. Full disclosure, I'm going to say this too. This is actually the second time I am recording part two. So what does that mean? <laughs> it means that, as I say, I always keep a backup safe, because that way, if something weird happens with recording, I can go back and kind of rerun things. Um, but what happened here is you will see probably at the end of the show, you may see a rating that was different than what I actually talked about in part one. But um, I will tell you there was you know, nothing structurally different different in part one on the second go around, meaning no one got injured. Like There was nothing drastically different. All the results were obviously the same, but the recording did not record, <laughs> which, as I said, just happen sometimes which is why i've learned to keep the backup so we're gonna jump into part two on this next go around uh but like i said at the end of the show you may see a rating you're like wait a second didn't he say that was a 68 and not a 65 or something yes like that's the only you know changes you'll see just from a, a statistical standpoint but everything stays the same so <laughs> here i go again let's hope my voice can carry through this because these are lengthy recordings as you know uh, with both of these videos so let's jump into part two all right kurt angles backstage he is with um, Chad Gable kind of going over the, you know, tactics for the Royal Rumble match. Here comes AJ Styles and the Bullet Club, Adam Cole, Finn Balor. Um, Styles walks up to Angle, and we've seen this yet again, right? Styles just gets in Angle's face once again, and he just says, Kurt, you're wasting your time. He says, Chad Gable has no chance to win the Rumble, and the reason why is because I'm in it, because Adam's in it, because Finn's in it. We're not going to let him win it. The Bullet Club's going to walk out of there, one of us, as the winner of the Royal Rumble. And he says, Kurt, I keep telling you, you don't need to be here. You need to go back into retirement because I wouldn't want one of us, you know, to get a little antsy and maybe rekindle some past memories. And AJ's just, you know, you can tell just taunting Angle at this point. And so he just says, so sit back and watch. We're going to go out there and do our thing. And Chad... You better stay out of the way because we will hurt you if you get in there and try to stop us from winning the Royal Rumble. So um, Styles taking aim yet again. Angle is furious, you can tell. But as they walk off, they turn away, and Angle's anger just sort of turns into a bit of a smile. What is Kurt Angle smiling about? Perhaps we will find out. 69th segment here for this one. Um, there's one of your setups heading into the Royal Rumble. But before we get there, we've got to get to this match because it's a big one. Fatal four-way first pin wins, not an elimination match, between Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Johnny Gargano, The Miz, Sami defending his United States Championship here. Of course, the backstory. Uh, Sami wins the U.S. title over Kevin Owens uh, on a just memorable edition of Raw to start the new year. Um, and of course, all that come after Owens and Gargano went to the draw at Armageddon. Um, so Gargano never loses. He gets slotted in the match. And then Mick Foley, I think for his entertainment, added the Miz to the match to set up quite a dynamic here with these four going at it for the United States Championship. Um, and so that is your setup here. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Johnny Gargano, the Miz, the United States title. Can Sami keep the belt around his waist? Here we go. And <laughs> as you can see, in a 76 match, Sami Zayn, defeats Kevin Owens, Johnny Gargano, The Miz, and 1148. And how does it happen? Well, he pins The Miz. Uh, of course, it didn't happen exactly like this because, as you know, I would usually put an angle on a shorter show uh, or a show where we had more segments to work with. Here we don't because of the two Rumble matches being so long. But here's what happened. So, as you can tell, this note's very important. Austin Theory, who Kevin Owens faced during the December run on Raw, uh, when he faced the, the, did sort of the NXT Open Challenge, um, you know, Owens beat Theory. Theory came back saying he was going to bring his dad. That was Gargano. But Gargano comes back and just attacks Theory and just throws him into the Titan Tron. Um, so Gargano back to be serious, wasn't dealing with Theory's, you know, antics, all that. 
So Theory makes his eventual turn here now, and he attacks Gargano, takes him out of the match. Now, what happens after that? Kevin Owens turns and hits his finisher on The Miz, so The Miz is down, but then Zayn takes control, hits the Huluva kick on Owens, and then he throws Owens out of the ring, and Zayn realizes what he has to do. <laughs> As The Miz is down and out, um, you know, from the pop-up powerbomb, Zayn just looks around, he hesitates, the crowd sort of turns from booing him to sort of cheering him now because they realize what Zayn has to do to keep his title. Sammy walks over, he gently just sort of lays himself on the Miz, the referee counts three, and Sammy Zayn has retained the United States title by pinning the Miz. So that is your setup there. Um, then we get Sammy just running out, grabbing the championship, and just sprinting to the back, obviously to get away. Maurice is on the outside, she's angry at all of this. The Miz is out. He don't know what what's happened here. And so that is how Sammy retains the title. Now, right after the match, the camera follows um, Sammy Zayn to the back here, and it is Pat McAfee saying, Sammy, Sammy, do, do you realize what you've just done? And Sammy's just like, Pat, look, I know what happened out there. I, I'm going to, me and the Miz were best friends, but like, I had to keep my title and, um, you know, I just, I had to do this. I didn't have a choice. And so he's just kind of talking himself into his decision here. Um, but he's just saying, look, I, I didn't have a choice. I had to do it. Right. Um, right. Right. Do you want to be my best friend? Like I've got a button here. Do you want one? Like Sammy's just rambling, but then, and I didn't get a chance to put this on the actual thing. I think we actually left him off screen, but we have Mick Foley sort of in the distance. We see Mick and Mick's like, Sammy, you're the only person who has not drawn their Royal Rumble number. The match is about to begin here soon. Come get your number. Um, and sort of Sammy's like, Pat, I'm sorry. I'll get you a button in a minute. I got to go get my number. Royal Rumble number. If the Miz comes by, tell him to call me. Like, we'll, we'll get this figured out. So Sammy's just all flustered, as you can tell. But he's still the champion. He's still got his belt. And now Sammy goes to and draws his Royal Rumble number. So 72 here for this segment. And that is going to lead us into um, a match I'm pretty excited about. Um, but I think this could go a lot of different ways, to be honest with you. I think this could be good. This could be... Less than good. Um, I don't really know what to expect, but it is our, our undisputed tag team championship match with um, Enigma, our tag team champions, Jeff Hardy and Ricochet, taking on the Lucha Brothers. Um, and, uh, you know, the story is that the Lucha Bros finally perhaps getting their hands on the WWE tag team titles here for the first time since joining the promotion back in October. They came in to kind of help Edge out against uh, Rey Mysterio. Uh, but since then, you know, Enigma surprisingly becomes champions. Not a, people, not a lot of people thought that would happen. Uh, but here they are as the champs, and it is a ladder match, so a chance for a lot of uh, interesting spectacles here uh, as we go into it. So here we go, Undisputed Tag Team Championship, the ladder match for the titles. And <laughs> in a 74 match here, my voice is starting to go out, guys. I hope it's going to make it through the Rumble. Um, the Lucha Bros get the win over Enigma, uh, 9.55. I know shorter, but again, some of the match times are just, <laughs> they're, they have to be shorter because we have these two Rumble matches. Penta retrieves the title, and the Lucha Bros are your champions now for the first time ever in WWE. So, Ray Phoenix, just remarkable. 91 here, but I think what hurts is a little bit, Penta being off his game, my guess is this would have been, this could have done an 80, perhaps, and I know that sounds high, but I wouldn't have been shocked by that, given how good Ray is in the ring, and again, Penta's usually better than a 71, so um, that probably hurt a little bit. Ricochet and Jeff, just kind of where they are. Um, you know, we always take our shots at Ricochet, but he is what he is, right? At this point, in our save, that is. But um, still, chemistry notes, all that good stuff. But 74, we've got new champions. So another you know, new champion crowned here, the Lucha Brothers. First ever WWE tag team titles around their waist. And so, um, yes, they have a lot of momentum now after becoming the champions. So, all right, let's get now to this. And it is the video package looking at the road to our main event, or one of our main events. I think we've got three, as I said. Um, Edge versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. We're kind of looking at all this. Of course, it was all the way back to SummerSlam with, you know, Edge and Orton being in cahoots here. Bryan wins the title. Orton hits the RKO. Edge had cashed or had won money in the bank earlier in the night, cashes in on Bryan, and that has led to this month-long kind of thing with Edge, which has been quite a title run, if you know. Um, you know, hey, Edge's run, there's been a lot to it from the singles matches Cesaro, Montez Ford, we actually lost the title before technically getting it back. Um, he's had the stuff with the Bullet Club, and that's what's been playing up here. Edge, has this taken his toll on him? Uh, and, you know, for Daniel Bryan, this is his last shot, and Edge is kind of saying he's not the old Daniel Bryan. He wants to see the old Daniel Bryan. He hasn't seen it 
which is why he cashed in on him in the first place. And so that's your setup heading into this one. And I do want to say quickly, we'll go to the graphic here, 83 for the segment. So one of the segments that I did not put in here, and I don't think it's saved actually, but we need to mention it, is on Raw, you had Christian going to Steve Austin and saying, hey, I want Orton banned from ringside for this championship match. So the way we're going to follow that up is, and again, I just think I've, I honestly probably just did not put the segment in the last save that we made. We had added the segment before we started the show, but it just did not save. And the this, this show technically has not been great, but I knew it was going to be this way because there's just so many moving parts. But it's basically Austin telling Christian, hey, Christian, I'm going to agree with you. I think Randy Orton should be banned from ringside for this championship match between Edge and Daniel Bryan. But then after Christian is all excited, Orton says, but I also think you should too. And so he tells him that not only is Orton banned, but Christian's banned too. So they both get the ban. That leaves Edge all alone here now against Daniel Bryan. And here we go. This is the championship match. Edge, Daniel Bryan, can Bryan finally get the championship around his waist, the one-on-one -on -one match he's been waiting for against Edge. Here we go. And in an 82 match, you see it. Daniel Bryan has defeated Edge 1450. The cattle mutilation makes Edge tap, where it's basically like, hey, Edge has nothing left at this point, given everything he's gone through since winning that title, all the pressure, all the different fights that he's had against all the people. Daniel Bryan, able to take advantage, get the win. Two great in-ring performances here from these two. Um, 82 again, I'll take that, because Edge has declining physical ability. I don't think Bryan does. I don't know if we've talked about that. Um, yeah, only Edge does. So that's nice. So Daniel Bryan is the WWE champion. Yet again, a long road to get here. But we had to build it back to this point. We got it sort of coming full circle. And this was it. Edge had nothing left. Bryan has been waiting on this moment for months. And that is how we cap off sort of our undercard, I guess. Because it's not even an undercard, right? That's a big match. But Bryan successfully wins the title. And now... He awaits uh, to see what happens in the Royal Rumble. Meanwhile, Edge completely deflated here, losing the title after such a run, and we will see what comes next for Edge. So an 82 overall here for this one, and that was the match. And before we get to the Rumble, we had to add in our 100 rating, right? Because the Rumble's not going to get a 100. But we needed to get all four of these guys on the show because with their popularity, if they're not on there, as we said earlier with Bianca, uh, they'll get the unhappy note and all that. We don't want that to happen because this has been too big of a storyline. So we do a video package here hyping uh, everything that's gone on with Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and the Usos. Um, and uh, if you've been following the series, you know exactly what that is. But the bigger hype is setting up the next edition of SmackDown, which is Reigns teasing that he has a reward for Jimmy Uso given what's happened recently to Rollins. Rollins now out with a concussion, banned from the arena. Of course, Jay was taken out by Reigns several weeks ago. Um, but Roman has a reward for J Jimmy helping him, uh, and he's going to present that to him on SmackDown. So a big addition, a must-see addition of SmackDown, I must say. Um, so that will be a big segment, and I'm looking forward to that one. So a 100 here, that really helps from a rating standpoint. But now we get to the important one. It is the match of the night, our main event, the men's Royal Rumble match. 30 men competing here, and I just said, I, I like the Women's Rumble. I thought we did some good things, but I think this one, this is among the most exciting and I think rewarding things I've done in the series so far because putting this match together, the men's match, was a lot of fun to tie in all the different things I wanted to tie in, and as you'll see, there's a lot of them, <laughs> but um, let's get to it. The men's Royal Rumble match, here we go. All right, and let's find out who drew number one in the Men's Royal Rumble. And it is... <laughs> Sami Zayn. I mean, I, I could not... Come on, guys. Like, I could not, you know, pass up this opportunity to put Sami Zayn, the ultimate conspiracy theorist, at number one. So, Sami Zayn... I, mean, I didn't do it, right? Like, it's just luck of the draw. I mean, Sami just drew number one. So, <laughs> Sami's music hits... And you just see him coming out, just shaking his head. He's just got all of these, you know, animations and expressions everywhere. He's not happy. He's talking about this conspiracy. You know, Foley said there was only one number left to be drawn, and it turns out Sammy has drawn number one. So, Sammy Zane, the first entrant into the men's Royal Rumble match. And uh, we will see if Sammy, who's already had a match uh, this evening, uh, is able to uh, go the distance here to uh, win 
the Royal Rumble. All right, Sammy's in at number one. The conspiracy th- theory continues. I'm sure we'll hear about this on SmackDown. Uh, but let's find out who drew number two. And number two is Montez Ford. So, uh, of course, Montez Ford has been a big uh, kind of player in our series because of uh, his ascent up the uh, you know ranks here. And remember, Montez had the shot against Edge, uh, had actually won the championship, and then, unfortunately, uh, due to Edge having his foot on the rope, the referee reverses the decision, Edge hits the spear, and defeats Montez Ford and takes it away. And we've kind of seen a change in mindset for Montez Ford since then. Comes out with a very determined look here. Um, He's talked about he has to win this match. He has no choice. He has to win. Like, this is, you know, it for him. Like, this is his opportunity he has to win the Royal Rumble. If he's going to do it, though, he's got to do it from number two here. So, Sammy and Montez Ford starting things off. Uh, you know, some good action here between these two, of course, uh, given their talent. So, uh, we kind of have them going back and forth here. Ford almost gets an elimination on Zayn very quickly, uh, but Sammy able to stay in. And so, these two go back and forth until number three. And number three is Dominic Mysterio. So, uh, Dominic making his way into. Uh, the fold here, and um, you know Dominic has been involved in you know quite a storyline with Ray and Angel Garza, uh, but Dominic enters at number three here to join Sami Zayn and Montez Ford, and that gets us to number four, and number four is Shinsuke Nakamura. So you know Nakamura has not been someone that that has really been heavily focused on in our save, but as we keep saying, part of that is due to sort of the um, some of the attributes he has and the declining physical ability, it's kind of been the um, just, just not an ideal setup for Nakamura. I mean, he just made an event in the SmackDown with Aleister Black, and that match was one of our worst main events ever in the history of the save. So uh, not ideal for Nakamura right now in terms of kind of his physical ability and the decline there. Uh, but he does enter at number four here. So Sami Zayn and, and Nakamura getting kind of reacclimated to each other. So we get a little back and forth between those two course calling back to uh, some of their matches in the past so uh, Sammy and, and Nakamura going at it forward and, and Dominic uh, going at it as well and that leads us to number five and number five is Angel Garza so an interesting dynamic here because you know Garza has been sort of you know helping out Dominic and um, kind of giving him you know some inspiration here and of course that's not made Ray happy but Garza comes in at number five so kind of what's going to be his approach to this rumble knowing Dominic is in there too um these two finally in the same ring together because it hasn't happened before because we've just had Angel Garza um you know sitting basically in the front row and and just kind of cheering on Dominic uh but now they're actually in the ring and here's what happens is you know Nakamura starts going after Dominic and it looks like Shinsuke Nakamura has Dominic eliminated um he's going over and he goes to throw Dominic out but here comes Garza and Garza grabs Nakamura as he's kind of has all his momentum going towards the ropes to throw out Dominic. And then Garza uses that momentum to eliminate Shinsuke Nakamura. So, um, wow. So that was a big elimination here early on. Of course, Nakamura, the first man out of the Royal Rumble. And I actually have a, a fun little story we're going to do with that. Um, but Nakamura out of the Rumble here uh, as the first, you know, one out of this men's Rumble. But the bigger story, perhaps, is Angel Garza has just saved Dominic from elimination. So perhaps there is, you know, something to this. Uh, Garza clearly, you know, has a plan here for Dominic, and and he's really tried to sort of align himself with Dom. So um, Nakamura's out, and Angel Garza with the save. So uh, there is our first elimination in the Rumble before we get to number six. And number six is Finn Balor. So... Balor comes right into the ring, um, and, you know, that kind of puts him in a position where, hey, he's in the Bullet Club. Uh, We know kind of how dominant they've been to this point. Balor comes in, and he starts going after Montez Ford. Of course, there's been a lot of interaction between the Bullet Club and, and, you know, the Street Profits and everyone involved in that over the past several months. So Balor and Ford start fighting, and actually, you know, all all their momentum takes them to the outside, not an elimination. They go through the middle of the ropes. So... They're now fighting on the outside, just kind of going at it with each other. Look, I know we try to keep everyone in the ring for the Rumble, but hey, this is going to be a chaotic Rumble, and uh, good luck trying to do that with all the parties involved. So that just leaves Sami Zayn 
you know, in there to kind of go at it uh, with Angel Garza. And of course, Dominic's still in there. And then that gets us to number seven. And number seven is Rey Mysterio. So now things get even more interesting because in the ring, you know, in the actual ring, we have Sami Zayn, uh, but we also have Angel Garza and Dominic Mysterio. Ray comes right in and he goes to confront Garza. And that is when we have a very quick sequence here because Ray comes in to confront Angel Garza and Garza just continues to tell Ray, look, Ray, I'm just trying to help. Um, but what happens? Sami Zayn, who happens to be in the ring with these guys, he pushes Ray Mysterio into Angel Garza, uh, and that kind of sends Garza flying over the top rope. So a big kind of, you know, head of steam here as Zayn just kind of gives a huge shove to Ray uh, as they're standing near the ropes, and that sends Ray into Garza to eliminate him. So Angel Garza is out. But then what happens is Ray Mysterio turns around and he finds himself face to face with Dominic. Um, you know, Dominic's trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, and you know, Garza's not happy on the outside. And so Sammy takes advantage of this as well, because these are all, you know, these three guys are just all distracted with each other. Sammy takes advantage of this. He pushes Dominic into Ray and that actually eliminates Ray Mysterio. So Ray comes right into the match. Chaos is broken out here. Dominic goes into Ray. So now you've got Ray and Garza on the outside and they're jawing back and forth. Dominic is, you know, distracted by this and Dominic turns around right into Sami Zayn who catches him right with a kick and then Sami Zayn <laughs> tosses Dominic out over the top rope. So Sami, in a very quick sequence here, has essentially eliminated three people in a row, uh, even though technically uh, not the case, but Sami has caused all of these eliminations and oh boy, we've now got Ray, Angel Garza, and Dominic all on the outside and chaos is sort of breaking down here between these three. Uh, it leads to kind of Dominic once again, kind of being in the middle of this and, you know, just kind of you know, taking Ray and just kind of pulling him to the side until they kind of go up the ramp and exit. So Sammy has <laughs> unleashed all sorts of wild stuff here, but what does that leave? Forden and Balor are still fighting on the outside. They're still just kind of going at each other back and forth. And so Sami Zayn stands alone in the middle of the ring all by himself before the countdown begins. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And in at number 8 is John Cena. So we have not seen John Cena since Survivor Series when Sami Zayn cheated to pin John Cena, and you can just imagine the reaction of Sami Zayn as he realizes he is all alone in the ring, and John Cena, who Zayn has just trash-talked for months and months now, is here, and he is back, and Sami's facial expressions are just on another level here. Um, you know, Sami's just kind of backing up and holding his hands up, and here comes John Cena. Cena gets into the ring, and right away, Sammy's just sort of pleading, you know, as all great heels do. He's just pleading with John, look, John, I didn't mean any of it. I promise I did not mean any of it. Um, we're best friends. And Sammy's like, I have a button. I have one. You're Sammy's best friend. You can be my best friend. Like, we're good. And that's when John Cena goes, you know, to extend his hand. And Sammy's just like, oh, thank goodness. Like, all right, we're, we're getting past this. And then John Cena hits the AA, and he proceeds to throw Sammy, Sammy Zayn over the top rope to eliminate our friend Sammy. So Cena is back and poor Sammy, the luck of the draw gets him here. Not only does he come in at number one, but just as he thinks that he's doing something and about to make huge strides by eliminating several guys, here comes John Cena to ruin Sammy Zayn's chances and that will do it for Sammy. So huge development here as uh, now that leaves us with uh, Finn Balor, Montez Ford, and John Cena before we get to number nine, and it is Kofi Kingston. So Kofi trying to sort of get back to the Kofi mania, as we know. That's kind of what we've been pushing here as we enter him into the Rumble. So Kofi in at number nine. And so, uh, again, we've got Balor, we've got Ford, we've got Cena and Kofi Kingston. Number 10 is 
Chad Gable. So Gable comes into the ring, uh, again, under the tutelage here of Kurt Angle. And, you know, we've got Angle coming down with Gable, so he's here uh, to kind of, you know, get a good glimpse at what's going on. So Gable comes into the ring. We'll see if the training of Kurt Angle can pay off here uh, as he joins the mix here at number 10. Then we get to number 11, and number 11 is Adam Cole. So now we've got two Bullet Club members represented here, uh, and Adam Cole joins into the mix, and that immediately leads to Cole getting to the ring. And the first thing Adam Cole does is we have a stare down here with John Cena. So Adam Cole and John Cena sort of staring each other down, uh, but that's when Balor comes from behind, and it is Cole and Balor who kind of go after Cena then we get to kind of the expected turn, right, where it's Balor and Cole teaming up on Chad Gable. Uh, we've been pushing that, of course, uh, on recent episodes and earlier in this show. Um, so Balor and Cole start teaming up on Gable. And again, we've got several other guys still in the mix, John Cena, Montez Ford, and Kofi Kingston. So um, Cena and Ford going at it. Kofi's in there. But Balor and Cole really trying to do a number on Chad Gable, but not really getting a lot of help here <laughs> um, for Gable. So um, that is number 11 with Adam Cole. And then it's number 12. Number 12 is Brock Lesnar. So Brock, his first appearance in our series, Brock is in the Royal Rumble. Um, I kept telling you guys, you know, I didn't really have any plans for Brock Lesnar. I think I said that for a while, but that changed uh, a while back to where I was like, you know, I think this is what I'm going to do with Brock. And so you will certainly see that play out here now but Brock is here his first appearance in the save and what happens you better believe here's what happens because Brock comes in he hits the F5 on literally everyone in the ring so Brock Lesnar comes in F5s everyone um, you know had the stare down with John Cena as you would expect um, but hits Cena with the F5 then he just goes on a roll he's hitting Montez Ford with the F5 he's hitting Adam Cole with the F5 he's hitting Finn Balor with the F5 Chad Gable and then he gets to Kofi Kingston. And boy, we know the history with Brock Lesnar and Kofi Kingston. A very short history, um, you know, pun intended. Uh, but that is when Brock Lesnar takes Kofi Kingston, hits the F5 on him, and then he puts Kofi on the apron. And what does Brock do when he puts Kofi on the apron? Because, you know, that's the spot, right? Kofi's supposed to be able to defy all of this and just be able to, you know, do his, his crazy spot when he gets thrown to the outside. To, to not to save himself from elimination. But Brock takes Kofi Kingston and literally throws him from the apron all the way through the announce table. <laughs> and oh my goodness, like Kofi Kingston is officially eliminated. Um, but I mean, more so than that, I mean, Kofi is, is injured here. Uh, Brock throws him through the announce table from the apron. So Kofi is getting help from the officials. And that is when Brock simply slides under the ropes. He's laughing this whole time, and Brock just goes over, picks up Kofi, hits another F5 on him on the outside onto the floor, and boy, we have seen sort of the old Brock Lesnar back in play here. Um, so Brock is doing all this before we get to number 13, and number 13 is The Miz. So The Miz comes in, and he is just, I mean, you know, Miz is angry. We can see the anger on his face because, of course, we know what happened earlier getting pinned by Sami Zayn uh, of the United States Championship. But Miz is walking slowly here, very, very slowly. Keep that in mind. And he does not actually get into the ring. So the Miz kind of really taking his time because he's seeing what Brock Lesnar's doing. And so the Miz is sort of like hiding here in the aisle because he wants no part of what's going on with Brock Lesnar. Uh, but again, Lesnar just kind of standing over Kofi Kingston on the outside. The officials are just breaking this up now. Kofi is, I mean... He's been thrown from the apron through a table. He's been hit with two F5s. Kofi is just incapacitated here. He's in trouble. Um, but that leads us to number 14. And number 14 is Big E. So here comes Big E, and he is sprinting down the aisle, and he goes right after Brock Lesnar. These two just start hauling off on each other. We've got, you know, Big E... And Brock Lesnar just hauling off. Lesnar's back in the ring by this point. So they are hauling off on each other. Lesnar goes for the F5 on Big E. But Big E able to counter it. And then it is Big E using his power to grab Brock Lesnar. And Big E is able to throw Brock Lesnar over the top rope 
to eliminate him. And whoa, there is a huge elimination as Big E just, I mean, furious here at what has just happened to his friend Kofi Kingston. He goes right after Brock Lesnar and he is able to use his power. That's what we've been pushing, right? Big E, the strength. There's no one that can match his strength. Well, it could be Brock Lesnar, um, but Big E is able to use that strength here to eliminate Brock Lesnar. Crowd loses their mind. Um, and so Big E just kind of standing in the ring. And that is when, you know, we see Big E getting ready uh, to go check on Kofi Kingston. Officials are all around him, still on the outside. Um, and then right from behind Big E, as number 15 enters, and number 15 is Damian Priest, right from behind Big E, Brock Lesnar gets right back in the ring, and he just grabs Big E, throws him over the top rope to eliminate Big E. Oh, no. I know. I, I said Big E was one of the favorites to win this thing, but what has happened here? Big E eliminates Brock Lesnar, then he gets sort of occupied with checking on Kofi Kingston, and Brock Lesnar gets right back in the ring, just completely pissed off, and he just hauls off on Big E from behind and throws him out over the top rope, which is technically legal in this match. And then on the outside, it is Lesnar who just starts going after Big E again, and he's just stomping at Big E on the outside and then going after him. Then the officials have to go from Kofi over to Lesnar to kind of keep him away from Big E. Um, so all hell is broken loose here. But what we know is that what could have been two of the favorites to win this thing, Brock Lesnar and Big E, are both eliminated via each other. And wow, the officials are breaking this up. They're getting Lesnar away from ringside. All just chaos has <laughs> broken loose here in the first half of this Men's Royal Rumble. So Lesnar is out. Big E is out. But um, what we did forget to mention is, and I, I had this in my notes, I just forgot. So Big E on his way down on the sprint, the Miz just happened to be standing in the middle of the aisle. Remember we said that. Um, he was just kind of hiding. Well, Big E just wallops the Miz on the way down to the ramp. So keep that in mind with the Miz just walloped by Big E and Miz is down and out in the aisleway. So that will be important uh, here moving forward. So Number 15, as we said, Damian Priest, and he's going to going out with John Cena. Of course, they've had a little history teaming up with each other on SmackDown. Um, and so Damian Priest into the mix at number 15. Number 16 is Christian. So here comes Christian um, to try to save the day, which at this point, Edge is not the champion anymore. So Christian um, doesn't really have a whole lot to worry about to offend his friend Edge uh, by winning the Royal Rumble. But Christian comes in. He fights with Montez Ford, um, and then that is when, uh, again, we have Cena and Priest kind of going at each other, a little perhaps friendly rivalry here between these two uh, top stars on SmackDown. Christian and Ford going at it. Of course, they have some history, um, and that, again, sort of puts Balor you know, and Cole in a position where they're able to team up on Chad Gable. So uh, Gable's just – he's taking a lot here, uh, just unfortunately being in the same kind of spot – with Balor and Cole. So that leads us to number 17, and number 17 is Angelo Dawkins. So now Montez Ford got a little backup here as he comes in, and that is when you know he gets into the ring. But once again, it is Balor and Cole who are already in there kind of with the, you know, the, the better footing, not having to slide into the ring. They go after Dawkins. Then they're able to kind of go at it with Ford, um, you know, who had been occupied with Christian. So Balor and Cole are taking out the Street Profits here. And then what do they do? <laughs> They go right back to Chad Gable. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we are with with these kind of all of these guys occupied. Balor and Cole going after Gable. And that is when Finn Balor and Adam Cole pick up Chad Gable to kind of deliver, you know, the final blow here uh, as he just, you know, he's been beaten down by these guys, right? There's no hope for Chad Gable uh, as everyone else is sort of occupied with someone else. And then the countdown begins. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Number 18 is Jason Jordan. So, yes, um, I know. In reality, Jason Jordan has retired with a neck issue and all that, but we're playing the game uh, as it lies. And what I did was I had this idea a while back. Um, we've been teasing it with the Kurt Angle stuff. Why did Angle's anger go to a smile? because he knew he had something in mind here. His son, Jason Jordan. I'm sorry, we're not going to push Jason Jordan as a Kurt Angle's son. We're just not going to do it. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but 
Jason Jordan, able to talk him out of retirement to where he's able to compete again. And so this was the moment. The crowd loses their mind knowing now we have Balor and Cole going after Chad Gable, but American Alpha or Team Angle Part 2, whichever one you want to use here, has officially been reformed as Jason Jordan is back and that he gets the ring and he just starts going at Finn Balor, going at Adam Cole. Um, so that gives Gable, you know, a chance to sort of regroup here. And we've got American Alpha or Team Angle. Again, whichever guys, whichever one you guys want to use. Um, they start brawling with Balor and Cole. They send them down. These guys hug Jordan and Gable, hugging in the middle of the ring. A very emotional moment for Gable or for Jordan to make his return here. And then they turn around right into a stare down with Street Profits. So um, Jason Jordan, Chad Gable, a stare down with Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins. And those two teams start going at it. So um, again, we've kind of, I know we've tied in some team stuff into these rumbles, but I just felt like this was kind of the time to do it. And uh, it just all kind of connected together. So um, yes, so Jason Jordan is officially back. So there's one of your surprise entrants here for the men's Royal Rumble, a big one. We've been excited to get to this one because we have a lot of fun plans in the future. And this is one that I'm really excited to kind of have into the mix because it gives us so much more to do now with Chad Gable. Um, so there you go. So Jason Jordan, at number 18. Then number 19 is Samoa Joe. So here comes Samoa Joe. Of course, still trying to prove himself, uh, you know, trying to prove, hey, I've still got something here and he's going to come out and try to win this Rumble. Joe goes right, you know, into a fight with Cena because, again, more history there with these two. Then Samoa Joe goes after Finn Balor and Adam Cole, who have now, you know, kind of had the momentum turned against them since Jason Jordan entered. So Joe in at number 19. Number 20 is Alistair Black, and he comes in with an absolute fury here as Black comes in, goes to eliminate Montez Ford, but what happens? Angelo Dawkins steps in front, and that is when Black is able to eliminate Angelo Dawkins. So Dawkins makes the save for Montez Ford, um, but, you know, unfortunately, it leads to the elimination of Dawkins. Uh, then Black just kind of takes out Jordan with a huge kick, and then Black kind of uses his own power to overtake Chad Gable, and Aleister Black eliminates Chad Gable. So Gable able to stay in there for 10 spots, um, but even with the return of, J of Jason Jordan here, he gets sort of, you know, taken out, and now Gable finds himself with a very fresh Aleister Black, and Black eliminates Gable. Then we get Damian Priest, who steps in, and of course these two start hauling off on each other because you know everything we've had going on with that uh, group there, uh, with Black, Priest, McIntyre, and Wyatt. So um, yes, there you go on that. So Alistair Black has come in and quickly taken out two people here uh, as the ring, as we said, is kind of filled up a little bit, but two eliminations here for Alistair Black. Until we get to number 21, and number 21 is Randy Orton. So Orton comes in with his own sort of fury here, and boy, does he make an impact right away. Randy Orton comes in. He's able to hit the RKO on Finn Balor and Adam Cole and Randy Orton. Just a lot of, of momentum here behind him. He picks up Finn Balor. He eliminates Balor from the match. Then he picks up Adam Cole, you know, able to counter some stuff there. And Randy Orton eliminates Adam Cole. So he has taken out two members of the Bullet Club here. Of course, again, we've had the the constant uh, sort of back and forth with Rated RKO and the Bullet Club over the past several months. And it's Randy Orton who eliminates Balor and Cole. Uh, so Randy Orton comes in right away. Huge impact on the match. Uh, then Randy Orton walks, you know, kind of turns around. And who's standing there waiting for him? John Cena. So Randy Orton and John Cena having a stare down. Uh, right there in the middle of the ring. But then, right from out of nowhere, we didn't even know where he was. Um, he was somewhere in this match. We just didn't know where. Christian comes out of nowhere, takes Randy Orton, grabs him by the trunks, and throws Orton over the top rope to eliminate Randy Orton. So Orton comes right into the match, eliminates two of the you know stronger guys in the match, and Finn Balor and Adam Cole, two of the, the, the more higher-profile stars, but then Christian, out of nowhere, comes from behind to eliminate Randy Orton, and you know what that's going to spark. Um, out of nowhere, though, right after that, what happens to Christian? He is basically cheering himself on for eliminating Randy Orton, but then Montez Ford, he also comes out of nowhere, drop kick to the back of Christian, and Christian goes flying 
over the top rope, and Christian realizes as he's laying on the outside that someone else is right there near him, and we know who that someone else is. It's Randy Orton, and so Christian gets up and starts sprinting through the crowd. Randy Orton gives chase, but two huge eliminations here as both Orton and Christian are out. Orton, as soon as he comes in, gets eliminated, so he's out of the match now. Um, Before we get to number 22, and number 22 is AJ Styles. Now, of course, what's just happened? Um, You know, not only we had Christian and Orton eliminated, but we also had Balor and Cole eliminated. So Styles is walking down the aisle, um, and here comes Balor and Cole as they walk by him, and we just kind of, you know, realize what's happening here. Styles is all alone, like in this match. He doesn't have his Bullet Club members in there. Um, They're walking by him. He realizes, you know, they're eliminated, and that's kind of that. And then Styles gets into the ring. Who steps up to AJ Styles? Another fun little callback, right? Samoa Joe steps right up to AJ Styles. Um, So these two go at it right away before we get to number 23. And number 23 is Keith Lee. So Lee comes in. He kind of does a little callback action with some people that he's out of history with. Damian Priest, um, you know, Aleister Black, all kinds of stuff here. Um, So Keith Lee going back and forth with Priest and Black. You can see kind of who all still left in the ring here. Um, a lot of a lot of interesting talent still in this match. Uh, but again, we've had some pretty significant eliminations thus far with, you know, Lesnar, Big E. Um, you know, I think Sami Zayn should be put in that category. Um, Randy Orton, Christian, like we've had some big eliminations. But here comes Keith Lee at 23. Number 24 is Bray Wyatt. So Wyatt makes his way into the conversation here. And Bray Wyatt comes in. Kind of like Aleister Black did, you know, kind of coming in with a fury here. He quickly hits Sister Abigail on Jason Jordan to eliminate Jason Jordan. So Jordan is back, but unfortunately he finds himself up against a fresh Bray Wyatt, and Wyatt eliminates Jason Jordan. Then Bray Wyatt and John Cena face off. Boy, it's like John Cena could have a face off with everybody, and there's some sort of history, right, uh, with, with all of these guys. And so Bray Wyatt and John Cena go at it. Uh, then Aleister Black joins the mix, tries to eliminate John Cena, but Damian Priest is there to save John Cena. So Priest has been a good friend here. Um, you know, saving McIntyre, saving Cena, all that. So he makes the save. So again, loaded up here with some top stars in this rumble as of number 24. Number 25, another one joins because it is Cesaro. So Cesaro starts dueling with almost everyone coming in with the uppercuts and, uh, Cesaro, you know, again, fresh here at 25, I mean, this guy would probably still be fresh if he was number one, uh, given the the stamina of our guy Cesaro. But he starts dueling with almost everyone, nearly eliminates AJ Styles. That's important because, um, you know, he almost gets the house out of this match. Uh, but again, that's because the Styles doesn't have that extra help with the Bullet Club, uh, of Balor and Cole, who've already been eliminated from the match. So um, Cesaro comes in. He's going at it with a bunch of people. And he, now you're seeing, like, look at the star power that's left in this match. Um, boy, this is getting very interesting, isn't it? Uh, number 26, Xavier Woods. So Woods comes in, um, and then it is able, you know, he's kind of able to go right at it with Montez Ford. So, hey, a little tag team history here. Um, Woods going at it with Ford. Uh, then Samoa Joe goes for a clothesline on AJ Styles, but what does Styles do? Styles ducks, and he is able to kind of, you know, flip Joe over him to the outside. So Samoa Joe has been eliminated by AJ Styles. So a little history there, perhaps a little payback for some of that history with AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. So Joe has been eliminated here in this match. And then we get to number 27 and number 27, Drew McIntyre. So McIntyre, as we've been pushing, easily one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win this Men's Royal Rumble match. He comes in and he runs wild. And who does he go right after? He goes right after Bray Wyatt. He goes right after Aleister Black. And yes, it is Drew McIntyre who comes in as the freshest man of the match here. He is able to quickly eliminate Aleister Black. Crowd loses their mind. Then it's Bray Wyatt who steps up to Drew. And of course, we've had this long history now between these two. And Bray Wyatt tries to take it to Drew McIntyre, but it's not happening because Drew able to hit a huge kick to Wyatt. And then he is able to throw Bray Wyatt over the top rope. So just like that, Drew McIntyre has come in and he said he was going to do it. He said he was going to take out these guys because all he cared about was getting back to the main event of WrestleMania. He takes out his two biggest foes. Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black have both been eliminated 
by Drew McIntyre. And then that is when we have Xavier Woods, who's fighting with Damian Priest. And Woods is kind of, you know, in front of Priest. Of course, Priest is a taller guy, right? But, you know, he's kind of got Priest down a little bit, and he's trying to, you know, kind of just nudge him to try to get him over the top rope. It's just not happening, though. But he's blocked him enough to where, hey, you know, if someone's back there, you know, on the other side, you can't really see Damian Priest. And that is important because Drew McIntyre, in the middle of just, you know, all this confidence, all this rage, he sees... Xavier Woods, and he's like, there's someone else that I've got to take out of this match. But what does he do? At the same time, he just races towards Xavier Xavier Woods. And again, Priest is kind of blocked behind him with the way Xavier is positioned. And that is when Drew McIntyre's momentum takes him right into Woods, which also kind of takes him into Damian Priest. And both men are eliminated via Drew McIntyre. So, yeah. Um... Damian Priest on the outside, and you can quickly see Priest kind of look up and realize what has happened as Drew McIntyre looks down and realizes what has happened. And it's Drew saying, look, Damian, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were you were behind it. Like, you know, just you know, kind of the emotion, right, of Drew McIntyre coming in and all that takes over. But he has just eliminated not only Xavier Woods, he has eliminated Damian Priest, and Priest looks stunned on the outside. So there goes Damian Priest. There goes Xavier Woods. McIntyre still in the match here as he has come in and made his presence felt by four quick eliminations on this one. Before we get to number 28, and number 28 is Sheamus. So here comes Sheamus, unsuccessful in going after the Intercontinental Championship, but um, he comes right in and he has a showdown with Drew McIntyre, of course. There's a lot at play there between these two. And as we have the showdown between McIntyre and Sheamus, um... We can start to see The Miz crawling towards the ring. Remember, I I made it important to to point that out earlier. Big E just wallops The Miz, right, on his way down. That was a while back. But The Miz has been down and out, and we see the camera starting to pan out a little bit, and it's The Miz who is crawling very slowly towards the ring before we get to number 29. And number 29 is Kevin Owens. And Owens simply walks by The Miz, so he just goes into the match, and he just waits. Like, he gets in, you know, throws a few shots at a couple guys, but then Owens just waits as The Miz is just kind of still, you know, he's loopy here. He doesn't know what's going on. Miz just kind of crawls into the ring, and Kevin Owens proceeds to kick him right in the midsection, you know, and throw him out. So The Miz, boy, thanks for coming, right? Technically, The Miz lasted longer, you know, almost as long as, you know, anyone in this match outside of a couple people, but... um. <laughs> He really never actually was in the match. Like, he came in at number 13. He gets eliminated at 29. So it's a long stay for the Miz. He just was never actually in the match until number 29. So Miz gets thrown out. Uh, That's kind of a fun little uh, tidbit there we can use. And again, Owens, certainly with the history with the Miz, Miz cost him the championship perhaps. So Owens eliminates the Miz. So Miz is out of there with Kevin Owens coming into the mix. But as you see, look at the the roster here that we have in place uh, as we are entering our final competitor at number 30. And number 30 is Walter. So he comes in at 30, our first, you know, usage of him in our series. And as he's coming down, it is announced by commentary that Mick Foley and Steve Austin were talking about the bidding war for this new signing to one of their brands. And Cole announces that he's just, you know, been handed an official release. Walter is the newest member of SmackDown. So, uh, Foley wins the bidding war for Walter here, and we see. And look, I'm I'm gonna call him Walter. If you guys want me to call him Gunther, we can. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Walter. Like I just I prefer that. I mean, it's the one you know the longest history there, so I'm gonna go with that for now. But he is number thirty, and he comes in, kind of like we've seen with Drew McIntyre. Um, comes in just I mean this guy you know massive, and and he's just like got all these hard chops, and he comes in and speaking of hard chops. He goes right after Cesaro and Walter able to kind of use his offense to eliminate Cesaro from the match. So Cesaro's out of there. Then Sheamus steps up to Walter. What does he do? He destroys Sheamus. And so Walter eliminates Sheamus from the match. And then the third guy to step up is Keith Lee, our intercontinental champion. So, I mean, think about the guys that, that he's already eliminated. Like, this is like, you know, I don't even know. Like, it's like Rocky Four level here. I mean, he's just stepping up, 
just destroying everyone kind of, you know, in his path here. Cesaro, Sheamus. Now it's Keith Lee. Keith Lee is no match for Walter here as he just goes after Lee. And again, we see some impressive offense. He eliminates our Intercontinental Champion, Keith Lee. So three eliminations here from Walter, and he's been in the match for two minutes, you know. But, oh, my goodness, he has come in and made his presence felt. And then after those eliminations, what happens? The Miz, who has been eliminated, right? Remember, we just had the Miz get eliminated on the outside uh, by Kevin Owens. Miz hooks Kevin Owens' leg because he's pissed off, and he's like, I'm not going to take this. So the Miz hooks Kevin Owens' leg while he's near the ropes. Owens turns around. Bad idea. Because as he does that, right from behind comes AJ Styles, and AJ Styles eliminates Kevin Owens. So more kind of history here and a little callback action uh, as it's AJ Styles eliminating Kevin Owens. And then, as you see, we are down to a very small group here. Um, Yes, and then here comes kind of the setup. We are down to five left in this Royal Rumble. AJ Styles, John Cena, Montez Ford, Drew McIntyre, and Walter And as Styles eliminates Kevin Owens, Montez Ford just kind of regrouping himself, you know, from fighting with with someone in the corner. John Cena just kind of looks around and realizes this is kind of his chance. Like, he he needs to take out Montez Ford. And then John Cena hits the AA on Montez Ford and picks up Ford and throws him out over the top rope. So Montez Ford all the way down, just right there. Even as the number two entrant, he makes it all the way to this spot. But it's John Cena who happens to be the one that prevents Montez Ford from achieving what he felt like he had to achieve to win the Royal Rumble. But now he has been eliminated. So Ford, and we see when Ford goes out on the top, like we just see something we haven't seen with Montez Ford. He's just completely dejected and just kind of sitting on the outside with his hands, you know, kind of over his head, and he's been eliminated by John Cena to leave us with our final four here of John Cena, AJ Styles, Walter, and Drew McIntyre. So a very star-studded group here in our final four, and that leads us into the final sequence here. Drew McIntyre comes over, hits the Claymore on AJ Styles, so Styles is down. And then it is Walter who comes over, and just, I mean, bludgeons John Cena with just an absolutely brutal clothesline. And so Cena is down. And then we have them step up to each other. <laughs> Drew McIntyre and Walter stepping up to each other in the middle of the ring. And you can just imagine the face off here. These two nose to nose. And they just start going at each other. Um, so we've got these two going back and forth. And then it is McIntyre who gets the advantage here. Gets Walter near the ropes. And Drew, just like a full head of steam here as he goes to kind of go after Walter. First clothesline, doesn't do it. Like Walter's sort of teetering, right? He's teetering on the ropes. So Drew, just even faster this time, whips himself off the opposite rope, coming full head of steam here at Walter. And that is when Drew McIntyre hits a huge clothesline on Walter. But at the same time, Walter's momentum is able to kind of keep him on the same level as Drew McIntyre, and he sort of pulls up, and that takes both men over the top rope to the outside. So McIntyre, in his attempt to eliminate Walter, Walter able to kind of maneuver his body, so he gets a little bit of McIntyre underneath him, and that raises both men over the top rope to the outside. Drew McIntyre and Walter have essentially eliminated each other, and that leaves us... Down to two, John Cena, AJ Styles. You want to talk about history. Cena and Styles are your final two. We have Styles and Cena down in each corner. Crowd starting to lose it as they realize this is it. Another showdown between John Cena and AJ Styles. Commentary pointing out, John Cena wins this Royal Rumble. He is going on to WrestleMania for the chance to be, you know, put himself in history here to win that coveted, you know, final championship that would move him ahead of Ric Flair for the all-time record. Meanwhile, AJ Styles, if he wins this thing, what does that mean, you know, for the Bullet Club and Raw? Like, what's going to happen here? 
if AJ Styles is one step closer to you know having all the power here as the champion. So quite a setup. And what we have here is kind of this turns into a singles match essentially with AJ Styles and John Cena as they are just kind of going back and forth with each other. Styles, you know, able to hit the Styles clash on Cena to try to get him over the top, but that's not enough. Then we work to Cena hitting the AA on Styles, trying to get him over the top rope, but that doesn't work. These two guys just keep hanging on. They're hanging on. They're hanging on. And then finally, Cena goes for a second AA on AJ Styles, but Styles able to sneak out of it, and AJ Styles hits a low blow on John Cena. He resorts to the underhanded tactics here, low blow on Cena, and Styles quickly grabs John Cena, throws him over the top rope, and AJ Styles has won the 2022 Royal Rumble. Wow. So, <laughs> Styles goes to the low blow, and we, should, we shouldn't have expected anything different here, but desperation mode, perhaps, for the leader, uh, the self-imposed leader of the Bullet Club, and then he eliminates Cena, and your winner of the Royal Rumble, AJ Styles. What a final sequence, and what a men's Royal Rumble. Um, I, again, love putting that one together. As you saw, there were so many different threads we tried to tie into the mix. Um, but at the end of the day, your winner, AJ Styles, and this will sort of, again, set in motion quite a chain of events, not just based on who won the match, but, again, everything we put together in this match Boy, we've got a lot to come and a lot of exciting stuff in the works. All right, let's go to the actual uh, match rating here and hope that no one got injured in this match. And there you have it. The Men's Royal Rumble winner, AJ Styles. What a match. And um, again, we as we said before, you can't control all this stuff here, but um, we did kind of note John, John Cena will be the final Participant eliminated. Um, Walter just destroying people in the match, so we set him with that. Montez Ford, lasting the longest, of course, goes all the way from number two to near the end uh, before getting thrown out by John Cena. Um, but Styles is your winner. 75 overall. You know what I'm most excited about, right? That has nothing to do with the rating. No one got injured, so that that's great. Um, I'm excited about that. All of these storylines that are kind of tied in here, as we said, um, gaining heat in a lot of them except for the rated RKO and the Bullet Club because that was so high, as well as McIntyre and Bray. But um, nonetheless, you know, kind of, I just thought that was a lot of fun. I said, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was just so fun tying in all the different stories and um, adding a lot of new ones to come here on the road to WrestleMania. So that was that. Uh, re, you know, I think the only thing we have here is uh, Lesnar, of course, first time we've used him in the series. I would hope the Beast <laughs> gets a very good, and it does. So that's good for Brock to have that. But that was it. Um, so there you go. There was the Royal Rumble we finished with a 75 for this one. The overall rating, a 79, as I said, that's not shocking, right, in any way, shape, or form because of why. You've got the two Rumble matches, and let's be honest. I mean, it's just they're not going to do huge ratings unless everyone we put in there is just flawless. So, um, But having a lot of new parts, a lot of new pieces, most importantly, setting up a lot of stuff on the road to WrestleMania, which um, I'm just really excited about. So we lose some popularity, don't care. That was a fun show. It was so fun to put those together, but it was also exhausting to put them together. Um, but there you go. That was the Rumble. Let's give some speeches here. I mean, we got to give AJ Styles credit for winning it, right? I mean, come on. Um, AJ wins it there. We're also going to give um, a shout out to, um, I don't know who, should, who else we should get a shout out to. Um, let's give a shout out to maybe, oh boy, I know. I'm always like coming to come up with this. I mean, come on, Edge. Had a heck of a run, right? So let's give him some some shout out uh, on that, and we will also give uh, Sasha Banks a little shout out as well. So uh, there you go. That is the Royal Rumble, and uh, we'll give our speeches here. And uh, now let's see what we need to get to before we wrap up. All right. So the Royal Rumble, uh, fifty nine thousand, as we saw there in attendance, a positive show. We didn't get we didn't strike goal, but I didn't expect that in, in that kind of setting. So. Um, there you go. That was the rumble. Um, now let's look at our mail here and oh boy. <laughs> oh no. There's a lot of mail. Um, and we see a lot going on here. All right. Pat McAfee's contract. Anyway, we need to keep that. Uh, Jacob five, two, we have on our short list. Um, as we do many people, Seth opinion. 
Okay, Seth, a big fan of Mia Yim, so maybe we should have made Mia Yim a little bit bigger uh, in the Rumble in terms of having a bigger impact. But now, <laughs> oh dear. Oh boy. All right, Paul Heyman. Oh no. Well, so Paul, AJ Styles wins the Rumble, and Paul Heyman, who has the tension with Styles, has decided now, oh, he's going to turn everybody against him. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, Paul? We give AJ Styles the Rumble win, and it just sets you off, right? Okay, so now Tamina's upset with AJ Styles. Seth, oh my, are you kidding me? Look at this. <laughs> this is unreal. This is unbelievable. Oh, so he's got even turned Seth Rollins against AJ Styles. Oh, dear goodness, man. Randy Orton is simmering tension with Styles. This is at, this is comical. Like, Aleister Black, okay. Come on, Paul. Like, give me like a, a ricochet or something, right? Kyrie, you've turned Kyrie Zane against AJ Styles. Dear God. All right, Paul. We're gonna have to think about firing Paul Heyman. I mean, he, are you are you serious? Like he's turned everyone against AJ Styles and just won our our men's Royal Rumble. Apparently, the Bullet Club takeover is complete because um, everyone's turning against him. So, uh, Rumble four million viewers. That's great. That's a lot of people. So, nonetheless, I'm excited about how the Rumble ended. I'm excited about the whole whole show, but I'm not excited that Paul Heyman has decided to flex his political muscle backstage um, because now everyone's turning against AJ Styles and well. That's not what we needed because AJ is clearly in a big spot now after winning the Rumble. So, uh, wow. Well, let's see how we navigate that. Um, we might have to fire Paul Heyman. He's got to go. Um, but right now he's on the sidelines after his attack from Seth Rollins. So we'll figure out what to do with Paul because he's caused a lot of tension. I mean, when you turn Kyrie Zane against someone or against AJ Styles, like especially, I mean, come on. She seems sweet. I don't know how you could turn her against that. It's just brutal. Just brutal. Um, so nonetheless, there you go. That was the Rumble. Like I said, guys, I know that was a different pay-per-view, much longer than you used to, but with the two Rumble matches, I didn't want to just say, hey, here's the winner. I wanted to really play them out for all the, the people who have been hardcore in this series from the start because you've gone 90-plus episodes, and I wanted to make sure I give it give it my all uh, on that. So I appreciate you um, and hope you enjoyed the Rumble. As I said, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, on the next episode of uh, our WWE 2022 series, it will be the state of WWE, WWE, for February 2022.